Hey everybody, recently we uploaded this video where we showed how to import models into Unreal Engine. But some of our models have more advanced textures than just this gun, so I wanted to show you guys how to work with materials that need a little bit more attention. Our new mech model right here uses UDIMs, which I'll explain in just a second, and it also has a transparent material for the glass, which Unreal handles a little bit differently, so I want to show you guys how to work with that. And now because this is a real-time project, I'm going to download the 2K version of the model. Okay, so I'm here in Unreal Engine, I've got a new project open, and and I'm just going to drag and drop one of the FBXs into the content browser and I'll press import all. Okay, if it imported textures, go ahead and select them and delete them because we need to set this up differently for UDIMs. So UDIMs are extra textures that take up more space than just the default square in a UV map, which is called the zero to one space. And if I look at the mech's UVs here, you can see that the UVs do go outside of the default square and take up other squares. So to make sure that Unreal Engine recognizes this, we need to go to settings, project settings, and I'm gonna search for virtual and look for enable virtual texture support. Once you check that, you need to hit restart now, and it will take a while because it needs to recompile all of the textures. Okay, here I am back in Unreal Engine. Everything's compiled and saved, and now I can start importing my textures. And here are the textures for the mech. We have a ton of different options here. I'm gonna go with the red one. Now you'll notice that they say base color 1001, 1002, and so on. Those are the different UDIM tiles. You only need to select the first one. So I'm gonna press open. And if I look in my content browser, I can see that my color map is here and there's a little VT for virtual texture. If you double click that, you can see that the texture is actually extra wide. In this case, it's 8K by 2K. So now we know that it worked, I'm gonna go ahead and import the other textures. Let's go import. I'm gonna grab the occlusion, I'm gonna grab the normal map, and then I'm gonna grab the metal and the roughness. Okay, and if you think back to our first video where we imported the gun, we need to adjust the settings for the roughness and the metallic map. So I'm going to click on both of those. I'm going to right click and go asset actions, bulk edit via property matrix. And this is just a spreadsheet that lets us change a couple options on the textures all at the same time. So in this case, we don't want to color correct these maps because they're not color information. So here where it says sRGB, I'm just going to uncheck that option for both textures. And then I'll hit control shift S to save. Now the other thing we need to do is take a look at our normal map, and if you're not aware, there are two different types of normal maps. There's DirectX and OpenGL. Now the only difference between the two different maps is the green channel, the vertical channel, is inverted. So depending on how the model was made, it might be an OpenGL map or it might be a DirectX map. In this case, this is an OpenGL map and Unreal is expecting a DirectX map, so what we need to do is go here to the options under texture. Let's go to advanced and just click on flip green channel and then we'll hit save. Okay, now we're ready to assemble our materials. I'm gonna go into my mech material and I'm gonna delete this default parameter and I'm going to grab all of my textures and drag them onto the graph. Okay, here's the color map and I'll attach that to the base color channel. And this is my metallic map. If you're not sure which map you're looking at, just click on it and then go over here and you can see the name of the map right here, it's metallic. So I'll plug this into the metalness channel. This one is the ambient occlusion. This one is roughness. And this one is normal. I'm gonna press save and I'm gonna drag the mech out into the scene to see what it looks like. All right, it looks like it worked, but we still have to assemble this glass material. So let's go ahead and do that. I'm gonna double click on mech glass material and we'll do the exact same thing, but we have a problem. If I hit save and then look at my model, I can see that the glass is not transparent. So we need to make some changes to the material. Click on the material node right here. And first thing I'm gonna do is set it to two-sided because it's transparent. We wanna be able to see the back of it. When we look through one side of the cockpit to the other, we wanna be able to see the glass on the other side. And then here where it says blend mode opaque, I'm gonna switch that to translucent and then scroll down to where it says lighting mode and change it to surface translucency volume. Okay, we're not quite there yet. Now we need to make it transparent, but not just transparent. Glass actually has what's called a refractive index and that means the light bends when it goes through it and another aspect of transparent materials to consider is the Fresnel effect so what that means is the more directly you look at a surface the more transparent it is and the more you look at it at an angle the more reflective it is so we want to change how transparent and how reflective the glass material is based on the angle that we're looking at it so let's do that just move our textures out of the way for a second and I'm going to create what's called a constant which is just a number so you can either right click and search for the word constant or the hot key to bring up a constant is to just hold down the one key and click and you'll get a constant so on this first one this is what is going to be our transparency or our opacity let's change that to 0 0.5 
and plug this into the opacity. And we can see that the glass is now semi-transparent, but we wanted to bend the light more around the edges of the model and less in the middle. So over here, let's create a lerp. If you're not familiar with what lerp means, it's short for linear interpolate, and it's basically just a way of blending together two values. They could be anything. They could be colors, they could be numbers, just any two values. So what we're gonna do is use this to have the refractive index which is the amount that light is bending, change based on the angle of view. So we want it to go from one, which means light is not bending at all, and we want it to fade to a value of 1.33 at the edges. And 1.33 is just the refractive index of glass. If you're making something other than glass, like water or diamond or some sort of crystal, you can actually just Google what the refractive index of all those materials is. But in this case, we're doing glass, so I'll do 1.33. Now how do we blend it? There's a special node just for that. I'm going to right click and search for Fresnel, it's spelled Fresnel with an S, and I'll just plug that into the alpha, and then plug this into refraction. And now when we look over here, we can see that the light is actually bending a little bit around the edges of the model. Let's go ahead and save that. And if we take a look at our model, we can see that it is working, it is semi-transparent, but there's one extra little step that I like to do. This isn't totally necessary, but since the color of the glass is so bright, I actually like to make it more transparent in the middle and become more opaque as you look at it at a sharp angle. So we're gonna do that exact same Fresnel trick right here, and we're gonna plug this into the opacity. So let's grab all these notes here that we used for the refraction and duplicate, control D, and we're gonna delete this little 0.5 that we previously used for the opacity. And what we wanna do is make it more transparent towards the middle of the object and then less transparent around the edges. So around the middle of the object, I'm gonna change that first number to 0.1, so it'll be very transparent. And then at the edge, we want it to go to 0.5. You can adjust these values however you want, but I'm gonna plug this into opacity and I'll hit save. And now our glass is more transparent, but when we look at it from a more extreme angle, it looks like it's reflecting the sky, which is how glass and the surface of water and things like that, that's how they all work. Okay, from here, you could adjust those numbers to whatever value looks best for you. You can adjust the color of the glass to give it a tint, maybe a green tint or something like that. Okay, and that's how you deal with UDIMs and with transparent materials in Unreal Engine. If you run into any other issues with materials and shading using our models in Unreal Engine, be sure to leave a comment and we'll try to make a video on it. And if you make anything cool with this mech in Unreal Engine or any other RenderCrate model, be sure to tag us on Instagram or post it to our Discord. All right, later creators.